Hello, my name is Zhang Zhengdong. I'm a PhD student of Professor Liu Peng from Zhejiang University. Uh, today, I'm glad to share our work about a hybrid CPU-FPGA-based solution to the password recovery of SHA-256 crypt. SHA-256 crypt is a widely used key derivation function adopted by many Linux distributions. The key function of SHA-2 crypt is to prevent the clear text password from being easily got by malicious attackers. To this end, the clear text password is processed by the KDF and stored as a password hash. By comparing the password hashes, the system will know whether the user's password is cracked. Meanwhile, as SHA-2 crypt is a one-way function, attackers can now directly get the clear text password, even if he got the password hash. This feature makes brute force attack the only way to recover the password from the password hash. So how does the brute force attack work? This is a diagram of the brute force attack. The original password P is encrypted by the KDF to generate a password hash H. The attacker applies KDF to all passwords in the searching space, then he matches every generated hash with the password hash H. If HX matches H, then the original password is found to be PX. The time consumption of brute force attack depends on two factors. The first is the KDF execution time, uh, which won't be very fast since KDFs are usually designed to be time consuming. The second is the size of the searching space, which is usually huge in most scenarios. For example, if we want to achieve a recovery probability of 80%, about 1 billion password tests are needed. Therefore, attackers have to pay enormous time and energy cost, and it is the same for the user who want to retrieve their forgotten passwords. That's why we need a fast and energy efficient accelerator. However, Shutter Crypt has some features that makes it difficult to be cracked on special purpose hardware. First, it has random execution passes for different passwords. For example, password 1, 2, and 3 may have a different and unpredictable number of message blocks. With such feature, Shutter Crypt is hard to be accelerated with the pipeline technique. Second, it has a complex data access pattern, which makes it hard to design a high bandwidth data path from the RAM to the compute unit. As a result, current solutions are limited to the low bandwidth scheme, typically 32 bits, like GPU or Shutter Crypt Accelerator in Genre Reaper, which means at least 16 cycles are needed to generate a 512 base message block. In this paper, we analyze the structure of Shutter Crypt and demonstrate the difficulties of accelerating Shutter Crypt with special purpose hardware, which include the data dependency that stores the pipeline, the random execution path, and the complex data access pattern. We also found that there is a structural weakness lying in the shadow crypt, which makes it possible to remove the randomness. Based on the difficulties and uh, weakness we found, we proposed a fast and energy efficient shadow crypt accelerator with several techniques, such as group schedule, look ahead execution, and data pass pruning and multiplexing. Compared with the state of the art works, our accelerator achieves significant improvements on performance and energy efficiency. To find out what is so special in Shuttle Crypt, we should first take a deep look into the details of Shuttle Crypt. Uh, Shuttle Crypt is specified as follows. It takes a password string, a random sort string, and an iteration counter n as input, and outputs the password hash h. Inside the SHA2 crypt function, we first need to generate four messages and calculate their SHA2 digest. For the sake of illustration, we assume that the password is 6 bytes and the sort is 8 bytes. The message A is generated by appending the password, sort, and password. The number marked on the top of each segment represents the size of that segment. Then we calculate the SHA-2 digest of the message A and get a digest A. Message B is generated by appending a password, sort, and the first six bytes of digest A. 
Then we convert the length of password into its binary format. From the least significant bit, if it is a zero, we append a password string. If it is a one, we append a digest A string. Then we calculate the digest and get digest B. Message P is generated by appending the password string six times. Then we calculate the digest P and split the first six bytes of digest P to get a temp P. Message S is generated by appending the sort string 16 plus DB0 times, where the DB0 is the value of the first byte in digest B. Then we calculate the digest S and split the first eight bytes of digest S to get a temp S. The next step is to iteratively generate the message C and calculate the digest C. First, the digest C is initialized with digest B, then the digest C, temp P, temp S, and iteration counter I are precised by the crypt pad function to generate a message C. Next, we calculate the digest of the message C and update the digest C. After each round, the iteration counter I is increased by 1. If I equals N, the iteration is finished. The last step is to generate the password hash. This is an example of SHA-2 crypt hash passwords. There are four segments. Adjacent segments are separated with a dollar character. The first segment is the ID for SHA-2 crypt is 5. The second segment is the total number of iterations. The default value is 5000. The third part is the sort string, and the last part is the base64 encoded digest C. As this step can be easily reversed, it will not be implemented in the accelerator. To accelerate the brute force attack on SHA-2 crypt, it's important that the accelerator has high parallelism because brute force attack is easy to be parallelized. Typically, there are two kinds of design to improve the parallelism. One is to build the accelerator with many relatively simple processing cores, for example, the GPU and the, the IPJ-based SHA-2 crypt accelerator in JTR. In such design, each core has its own control logic, which makes it easy to schedule, but it will cost more hardware resources. Another kind of design is to build the accelerator with deep pipeline. By using the deep pipeline, the schedule of different passwords is unified. As a result, it needs less control logic than the multi-core design, and thus more efficient. This kind of design has been adopted by many researchers and achieves good performance and energy efficiency. For example, the WP2 accelerator presented in CHES 2016 and the IR5 accelerator presented in TC2019. However, Deep Pipeline has its limitations. Almost all pipeline-based accelerators are targeting PPKDF-based algorithm, which has regular data access pattern and unified execution paths for different passwords. These features make it easy to schedule the pipeline. However, for some KDFs like Shadow Crypt, the complex data access pattern and the random execution paths make the schedule of the pipeline very difficult. To further understand why, let's view SHA-2 crypt in another perspective. As we can see, the operations in SHA-2 crypt can be classified into two categories. First, we generate a message by some rules. Second, we calculate the SHA-2 digest of the message. We also want to review the structure of the SHA-2 function, which is shown here. The input message is first padded with a 1, followed by several zeros, and a 64-bit message length. Then the padded message is divided into several 64-bit blocks. Each block is processed by the block transform function and generates a temporary digest, which is used as the state of the next block transform function. If we combine the details of SHA-2 function and the details of SHA-2 crypt function, the operations in SHA-2 crypt can be further classified into the following categories. First, we generate a 64-byte block. Second, we calculate the digest of the block with the block transform function. 
By this way, the execution process of ShutterCrypt is abstract as the generation and transformation of a series of message blocks, as we've shown here. So now we can figure out why it is difficult to accelerate the ShutterCrypt with pipeline. The first is the data dependency between the adjacent message blocks. The generation of a block depends on the digest of its previous block. If we have a 64-stage pipeline, the pipeline has to be stored for 64 cycles before the computing of the digest finish, which extremely slows down the accelerator. Another problem is the random execution path. As we mentioned before, the number of blocks is decided by the length of the message. However, there are too many factors that affect the length of the message. For example, the length of the password, the length of the sort, even the random number DB0. If the passwords have different number of blocks to be processed, the schedule of the pipeline would be very difficult. The last one is the complex data access pattern. The generation of the block is similar to select 64 bytes from the data buffer. However, there's no simple rules for hardware to know which bat in the input sources should be placed in which bat in the message block. If we want to generate the block in one cycle, a total of 64, 218 to 1 multiplexers are needed, which will introduce great overhead to the hardware resources and increase the critical path latency. Now we come to the part of how to solve these problems. By classifying the operations in ShutterCrypt as generating and transforming blocks, we found that this process is like a factory where there are two workers and a warehouse. The first worker is responsible to select 64 raw materials from the warehouse, and the second worker transforms the raw materials into products. Then the products are put back to the warehouse as the new raw materials. This factory inspired the design of our accelerator. The core of our accelerator is mainly composed of three parts, the data buffer, the data dispatch unit, and the block transform unit. The data buffer is like the warehouse. It stores all variables in shard to crypt. The data dispatch unit is like the worker one. It generates a 64-byte block each cycle. The pipeline the block transform unit is like the worker 2. It transforms the block and output the digest. Then the digest is stored in the data buffer as the new input sources. With this basic architecture, we will apply several techniques to solve the difficulties mentioned above. To solve the data dependency problem, we use the group schedule technique. Noticing that there are no data dependency between the blocks in different passwords, we can process a group of passwords together. Assuming that we have a three-stage pipeline, to avoid the pipeline store, we can group three passwords and feed the pipeline in the following order. In our implementation, we choose a 64-stage pipeline. Before we apply the group schedule, the pipeline is stored due to the data dependency, so it will only process one block in 64 cycles reach only 2% utilization rate of the pipeline. And if we group 2,048 passwords together, the pipeline could process 2,048 blocks in 2,112 cycles. The utilization rate of the pipeline would be close to 97%. Look ahead execution technique is proposed to solve the random execution pass. As we mentioned above, ShutterCrypt has a random execution pass because for different passwords, the number of blocks to be processed is different and random. The inconsistency of the number of blocks comes from two aspects. For message A, B, C, and P, the inconsistency comes from the variation of the length of the password. So it can be easily removed if we sort the passwords and group the password by length. For message S, the inconsistent comes from the randomness of DB0. To remove this kind of inconsistent, we propose the, the look-ahead execution, which is based on the following observations. First, there's only one sort when cracking one password hash. Second, there are only 256 possible values of DB0. 
which means we can calculate all 256 possible values of digest S in advance. The hardware implementation of lookhead execution is very simple. We first calculate all possible values of digest S on the CPU and store them in the LE buffer. Once the calculation of digest B is finished, the DB0 is used as the address to access the LE buffer. Then the corresponding value of digest S is read out and stored in the digest S buffer. By using the look at execution technique, the calculation of digest S is skipped on the hardware. Thus, the randomness of the execution path is removed. To solve the problem caused by the complex data access pattern, we provide an efficient design of the data dispatch unit. Uh, let's consider an in intuitive design where each byte in the message block is connected to all bytes in the input sources by a 218 to 1 multiplexer. And each multiplexer is controlled by a control signal from the finite state machine. At each cycle, the state machine gives a group of control signals, then 64 bytes are selected from the input sources and compose a block. Considering we need 8 bits for each control signal, and there are 815 states if we want to support the passwords from 6 bytes to 16 bytes, a total of 52 kilobytes memory are needed for the finite state machine. We also noticed that there are about 14,000 connections which cost about 50% LUTs on our experimental platform. Uh, such a big overhead is obviously unacceptable. As a result, we propose the data pass pruning and the spatial temporal multiplexing technique. The data pass pruning technique is based on the following observations. Uh, first, some variables could use the same buffer, for example, the digest B and digest C, because they will not be accessed at the, the same time. So we reuse the buffer for multiple variables and reduce the bytes in the input sources. Uh, second, a bytes in the block doesn't have to connect with all bytes in the input sources, which means the scale of the multiplexer could be reduced, so we customize the size of each multiplexer so that only the possible candidates are connected to the multiplexer. The data pass hotmap showed the number of connections for each multiplexer before and after applying the data pass pruning technique. The total number of connections is reduced from 14,000 to 3,000. We also found that when we fix the password length to 6 bytes, the total number of connections in the data pass will be reduced to about 400. Uh, this fact drives us to explore the temporal locality of the pa data pass and propose the spatial temporal multiplexing technique. This technique is based on the configurability of the IPJ. For passwords from 6 to 16 bytes, we prune the data pass and generate a bit stream file for each password length. Every time the length of password changes, the IPJ is reconfigured with corresponding bit stream. With this technique, the whole data pass is separated and distributed into different bit streams, and the overhead of data pass is reduced on each bit stream. Here we show the complete design of the core in our accelerator, which combines the technique we proposed above. Our experimental platform is based on the Zinc ZC703 SOC. On each node of the system, there's an ARM Cortex-A9 CPU and uh, a 7-series FPJ and an SD card. Uh, the CPU is responsible for top-level schedule and the calculation of the digest S. Based on the available hardware resources, we placed the two shuttlecraft accelerating cores on the FPJ and each of them works at 220 MHz. The SD card is used to store the base stream files. First, we compare our work with the FPGA-based non-pipeline implementation, the SHA-2 Crypt Accelerator in John Raper. For fair comparison, we reproduce the SHA-2 Crypt Accelerator in JTR on our platform. Our accelerator achieves 1.74 times block throughput and 1.64 times energy efficiency. 
The LUT is used as computing logic in JTR accounts for about 66%, while our work has a proportion of 88%, which means more hardware resources in our design are used for computing other than block generation or control logic. The resource efficiency of our accelerator is 1.69 times better than JTR. We also compared our work with Hashcat running on an NVIDIA GTX 1080 Ti GPU. The result has shown that our accelerator achieves 2.54 times improvement on energy efficiency than GTX 1080 Ti. Although the block throughput of a single node is only 0.15 times of GTX 1080 Ti, when we test our design on the 16-node cluster, we achieve a 2.41 times block throughput and still have 2.54 times energy efficiency. To validate the adaptability of the tags proposed in this paper, we also implement SHA-5 trial crit on the same platform and compare it with the GTX 1080 Ti. Our work also shows a significant improvement on performance and energy efficiency. Finally, let's draw the conclusion. In this paper, we proposed a hybrid CPU FPGA based SHA2 Crypt accelerator. It adopts deep pipeline to improve the parallelism. Group schedule is used to remove the data dependency that stores the pipeline. Look ahead execution is used to eliminate the non unified execution paths. Uh, data path pruning and spatial temporal multiplexing are applied to reduce the resource overhead. And we also found the structure weakness lying in the shuttle crypt algorithm, where the calculation of digest S can be finished in advance, then it can be reused for all passwords. Attackers may leverage this weakness to build more efficient cracking hardware. That's all. Thanks for listening.